Today we are going to make a steel letter M. And this was a picture that the customer sent me. Um, now he wanted it to have a height of 15 inches. So using, <laughs> using a ruler I actually measured on the screen from here to here. And I divided 15 by, uh, by that number. And that gave, gave me an overall value to be able to measure out, let's say, from here to here, from here to here. And so and so on and multiply it by that number and everything would be scaled up to meet that um that set value of 15 inch height um very fiddly it's very frustrating but you know sometimes you got to do what you got to do and slightly masochistic so it wasn't that bad transfer that onto cardboard and this is the cutout now i like how everything came out except for this curve right here that's not really that doesn't really match up with the uh the picture that good so I'll redo that, but everything else is set. So here's the uh, the cardboard template on the piece of uh, eighth inch uh, sheet that I got, and this was scrap metal I just picked up from a friend's house. I believe it was like part of a workbench or something. Um, obviously the paint and rust have to get removed, but otherwise it's good steel. So those are the radius that I freehanded and uh, the soapstone kind of started acting a little weird towards that end, but I think that's a little bit closer to what we were going for. Alright, so looking at this picture, there are four distinct sections. One, two, three, four. So the way I'm going to emulate that is I'm going to make uh, overlay pieces. I'm going to cut them out, and it's going to get welded onto that, which is kind of like a base structure. And here I have it all marked out, ready to get cut out. Alright, so here's all the overlay pieces laid on top of the base structure and cut out. So you guys could see a little bit more of what I was talking about. So you have the four pieces right here. And now the next step is to actually weld it onto the base structure. But first I have to kind of hammer in some uh, curvature to give it a 3D effect. Oh, those were sparks. Hmm. Glad I didn't catch on fire. So I'm not sure how uh, well the camera picked it up, but you could kind of see the uh, convexity there. Um, now the reason, in case it's not clear why I'm hammering on a piece of wood, is because it allows for deformation of the metal, whereas if I were to, to use my anvil, you know, it, it would just kind of bounce back. Um, so yeah, that's just a piece of plywood, or actually it's a part of my desk. <laughs>
All right, so here it is after all the grinding and sanding was done. Now I wanna add a border that goes all the way around the M. So I'm gonna use a process called TIG brazing, which utilizes silicon bronze and actually brazes the material onto the metal. It should look pretty cool. Then for being an EMT, you usually end up with a surplus of these guys. <laughs> so first things first, acetone white. Gotta get rid of all the crap and grease and shit. Alright, so now it's time to make some uh, hangers uh, for the back of the M. Now I'm going to use two hangers and, you know, I mean, while this thing isn't that heavy, um, I wanted to give the uh, customer the option of actually directly uh, attaching it to the studs in the wall. So I'm going to attach the two hangers at uh, 16 inches apart. So he has that option. Alright, so I decided the uh, hangers I'm going to make out of uh, these grade 8 washers. Now there's no there's no actual structural reason why I'm going with grade eight. That's just what I happen to have, and plus it gives me an opportunity to uh, show the procedure on how to, how to join uh, the grade eight to the mild steel. Now, as best as my research could uh, come up with, these are actually made out of 4140, which is a uh, Cromley steel, and um, some special considerations when you're welding this, especially when you're joining it to a dissimilar type of uh, steel. Now the the um, I doubt the camera's going to be able to focus in on that, but that's uh. 309 stainless filler rod that I'm going to be using with a TIG. It's uh, crack resistant, whereas 4140 will want to crack. It's prone to cracking. So this rod will be a good option to join it to that. Also going to give it a little preheat. Probably not necessary with something this thin, but that's the process. All right, so first we've got to grind off the cadmium coating or zinc coating, wherever the fuck that is. First off, these two are going to get joined. These are going to act like uh, little spacers for the back of uh, each hanger. Alright, now the two halves are joined together. I'm going to cut it in half. Now each half is going to get welded to one washer. That, that spaces it out. Enough room for a uh, nail or screw head. Alright, now to weld the hangers to the M. It's done.